Alex Karp, who's the CEO, uh, believes that Palantir will be the largest AI company in the world. And after looking at their results, listening to, uh, to Alex and his team, I think that might be right. Because what's happening is companies around the world are saying, this is big and we know we can't be left behind. Mm -hmm. And CEOs are getting involved in the decision, not just CTOs. Because there are so many small AI companies that have these, you know, chatbots and point solutions. And, you know, they're depending on others to put them all together. Uh, Palantir is saying, no, you have to... Look. So Kathy Wood's saying that Palantir is going to beat it. Microsoft and others in this race and actually become a ginormous AI company. Now, let's humor here for a second. What would that look like? What would that do to the stock? Would that be a trillion dollar stock? Probably, right? If you beat Microsoft in the AI game and you, you get that, you become the dominant AI force. So the real question for me then is sort of old investment banker thinking like, well, what, how does the valuation work? How do you get to a trillion dollars? Is that actually possible? What growth would you need for that? And that's what I want to walk you through. Like, is this a realistic outcome or is this sort of a pie in the sky? It's nice, but it's never going to happen kind of outcome. Before we do that, I want you to do one thing for yourself. And that is just have a look at what we've done so far this year. This is me trading probably less than two hours a week. And we're up here, whatever it is, $5,000 almost on a 30K portfolio. So we're doing quite nicely. And we're winning like 74, 75% of all of our trades. And this isn't luck. I did the same thing last year and the same thing the year before. And I've shown every single one of those trades live to my, my students and, and they can see it and they can, they can judge for themselves. This is true. And what I'd love for you to do is get the script, the system, the rules that I use for free because that's how we make people smarter and wealthier and happier. And I'm going to give that to you. Come and join me on Tuesday live at felixfriends.org slash webinar. It's Tuesday evening, Eastern time. And you can just head over to felixfriends.org slash webinar and pop your name and email in here, sign up, and you will get access. The last event we did like this, we were massively oversubscribed. Some people couldn't get into the room. So grab your seat early show up on time and we're going to have a blast and I'll give you all of my trading rules, all the automations and everything else. But let's get back to our friends Palantir here. So what's the sales multiple that we would need to actually get to this level? Well, let me show you one little chart here. First of all, like what is a sales multiple? Well, it's literally just how much is a company selling and how much the company worth? And that's the multiplier. So at the moment, 24 years worth of sales revenue is where we're valued. That's a part of that. That looks quite high on a one year chart. Well, go out into the maximum and you see that in 2021, at one point it was trading at 45, slightly 46 times uh, sales. We went the 30s in, in, in late 2021. We went through the uh, horrible slump of 2023 and now we're kind of heading back up there or sort of in, in near that direction. And you might be thinking, okay, so right, 24 times multiple we have. And I've made a little chart here for you. And I'm going to make this as big as possible so you can see it on the screen. We have at the top growth. Literally, how much is this company selling, growing by in terms of sales? And then on the side here, we've got price over sales multiple. And the current 24... How much do you need in terms of annual growth and revenue? At 41% here, that's one and a half billion, a trillion rather. We only need, need, need one trillion. So let's take that back to say 35% per year. Yeah, and you basically get to a trillion. Is that feasible? Can Palantir grow at 35% a year? Let me answer that for you. I know you know the answer. I've charted here Palantir's revenue growth since inception. And if you just exclude the first three years or four years, because they were kind of bonkers, you know, 120, 148, you only get that at the very beginning of a business. Let's exclude those big years. And then let's look at the average. Can you see that? 42%. It has actually historically grown more than what's needed 
to get to a trillion dollar, dollar multiple. And yeah, it did slow down last year, 20% only, the year before 31% only. So they do need to double growth, but it isn't completely out of this world, right? Now, you might think though, and let's just play here the conservative game and say, okay, but you're not gonna get a 24 times multiple down the road because established businesses don't work at such a multiple. Let me find Microsoft's PS ratio, just so you can see that. It's, uh, here's the same chart. So if you look at Microsoft, 10 years, they were in the 14, now they're at 14, basically. So if you were a Microsoft, just say the excitement dies down a little bit, and therefore your multiple is no longer gonna be 24, it's going to be 14, this row here. Now 35% gets you only to half a trillion, right? So what kind of growth would you need? What, 50% a year? Nope, actually you need less than that. would bring us to 1.6 trillion? Because it compounds, right? So 41%, I think that's, no, 42%. We're looking at this cell here, more or less, 43% a year. And you get to $993 billion market cap, which is, Coincidentally, the exact average of Palantir's growth, if you exclude these bumper growth years here at the beginning, because I don't think you're going to get 145% growth. It's fairly unlikely. It's possible. I mean, NVIDIA and all that, but it's fairly unlikely, right? So is it impossible? No, I don't think so. I think it's possible. But at the same time, I don't want you to YOLO into this and go, well, this is the most amazing company. I've now, you know, given up Jesus and replaced it with Alex Karp. Like, don't go that far, please. It has very, very cool tech. And it looks like they're delivering. It looks like companies really love this. But also bear in mind, they're hardly charging those companies anything. They're just trying to convince them. It's like the drug dealer at the corner going, uh, would you like a bit of, you know, and then you take it and now you're an addict and then you're going to have to go back and pay him every single day. That's kind of the business model. I'm not sure we should be going down the drug mule uh, route comparisons all that often on this channel. The algorithm may not like it, <laughs> but uh, uh, who cares? So what we really need to see is we need to see those sales numbers actually increase or at least the number of onboarded clients increase. And we're starting to see that, but I would still be a little bit cautious here. And growth stocks take time, right? This is a business that was founded, was it 2008? I think it's been around for a while. And you might think, no, no, but Felix, I want to get rich by next year or something like that. Well, if you are less patient than you ought to be as a growth investor, then come and learn to trade. Trading still won't make you rich by Friday, but it'll potentially give you an income like in, in, in weeks rather than years. And I will literally teach you my three rules, how we trade one stock, you can apply to any stock, and how we automate all the exits, all the profit taking, all the risk management, and that's why we are consistent. It's not because I'm some sort of genius who finds amazing trades, quite the opposite. I just have a really disciplined system that I automate because I know we can't trust the monkeys up in here. So. Let me know what you make of this. Put it down below in the comments. I think it's possible, but I do think it's the bull case. I think it's really like the outlier bull case. I think more realistic would be something between where we are now and, and that trillion dollars. And you know what? It doesn't need to be a trillion dollars to, to be a great investment potentially. So I, I, I wouldn't be upset if, you know, the stock makes me 20% a year or something like that. I'd be very, very happy with that. I know some of you are hoping for more and you know, let's hope we get there, but always be realistic, under expect, and then you get pleasantly surprised. And for the love of God and Alex Karp, obviously, please do diversify. And, and, and again, another way to do that is to trade because you just bring in more cash more frequently and you can then take that money and you can buy more good stocks with it, not just the one. Um, so we lost, just lost half the Palantir subscribers. So like Felix is no longer YOLOing all his money into Palantir. Um, no, that's not how I roll. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Finger the various buttons we got on the screen. And I hope to see you on the next one. Take care. 74% gross profit margin. That again means there isn't some young whippersnapper going, I can do this much cheaper than you. No.
there is otherwise their margins wouldn't be what it is. They have a 12% return invested capital, which is kind of for me the, the bottom line. I like of more than 